I think it's time to finish up some paintings. Good idea for today. Hey everybody, this is Bruce with Bowski Studio. As you saw, I have quite a collection of paintings that need some finishing touches. I uh, usually only work up to about 80% on my plain air work. Uh, very few get completed on site. I like to bring it home out of the sunlight and uh, study it, make it a painting, that sort of thing. So today we're going to work on one and do some final uh, layers, build up some texture and that sort of thing. So I hope you enjoy it. If you're new to the channel, visiting for the first time, thank you very much. I invite you to subscribe and if you like what you see, uh, be sure to hit that bell notification so you don't miss any future videos. So let's get started. Hey everybody, how's it going? So for those of you that have been watching my channel, you probably remember I did a video on this piece uh, way back. I'm not sure of the date, but when I was painting this, I had this guy stop and talk to me practically the whole time I was painting. So it's a pretty funny video. I'll try to uh, find the link and uh, put that in the description below. Uh, the palette that I used for this piece will be presented at the end, but Basically what I'm trying to do now over the winter is take these paintings that have been sort of piling up uh, some of my plein air work and some in-studio pieces, mostly plein air, and I want to work on putting some uh, more substantial layers on them to uh, add some interest to the pieces. Now what's interesting is of course most people will do a plein air uh, painting and then come home and finish it up, study it, maybe within the next day or two. Uh, sometimes I do do that. Other times they just tend to uh, collect, and I'm not sure why that is. I think I just like to mentally get some distance from the piece, and then when I look at it with fresh eyes, I can see what it's going to need in terms of uh, finishing it up. And this is also a good time to take some of those plain air pieces that seem to have a few good bones, but you're just not super happy with them and experiment and just go for it and see if you can improve the painting. And if you can't, so what? Uh, you've given it a try and uh, that's the whole point because you were not going to uh, show the painting anyway. So you might as well make an attempt and try it out. And I'm just trying to build up some texture in the grass right here with some paint and to give uh, the illusion of some texture without actually painting, of course, all the grass. And uh, with the light on the house. I really try to accentuate that, really create that warmth using a little bit of the cad yellow and some white. And I mix some of the paint on the palette. Other times I would put the paint on and mix uh, right on the panel. I did that quite a bit with the sky. Kind of created a base mixture and then added some, you know, uh, added some white, added more blue on the surface of the painting to create the texture that you see in the sky. So that really helped uh, add a lot of really cool uh, information to look at. And also I'm not using a reference photo to refer to as I continue painting on this. It's almost like I wanted it to go through one filter of me painting it on site with my emotional responses to different elements in the scene and not get too caught up in following. If I had a photo right now, I, which I do take some photos and I have them in a in a area on my computer that I call Artworks in Process and I keep it on my tablet. So I, I could have access to that if I want it. I might only use that if I want specific detailed structural information. Um, I try to really stick to my initial color impression of the scene as I painted it on site. And I think that adds uh, some really interesting kind of my insight as to how I saw the subject, which is normally I work pretty realistically, but sometimes I might amp up a color on purpose to draw attention for the viewer to certain areas of the painting. When I do that, I usually don't go too extravagant. I'm just not that type of painter. I'm usually attracted to seeing because of the elements of light and shadow at that given time. There are, of course, editing decisions you have to make as an artist because uh, maybe certain subjects you see, you want to paint as is. It's pretty much very interesting. Other times you see one element in the scene that you, you can envision 
in a different story and extracting that uh, subject into another painting. Like, say, it's just a house in a photo you took, not the surrounding elements. So you would paint that house, and maybe you imagine it in another scene, like telling a story. It's out in a field or, or you know, sort of a, a sense of solitude or whatever it may be. So don't be afraid. You know, a lot of times I'll take photos just as a uh, contemporary sketchbook. You know, I, I just use elements in there. I like the main structure of something, but the uh, maybe there's uh, some torn siding on the side of the house that I don't want to paint in there. I want to make it look more pristine to imagine it in a time when it was in its glory or something like that. Um, as an example, just use your imagination. One element I do like in this particular piece that I want to uh, keep separate was the house on the left to be in a different tone than the white house. Uh, it's like a pale yellowish color aged and I really like that sort of uh, difference in, in those two colors when I was on site painting it. I also kind of like to take this opportunity too. You see I'm working on that fence and what I decided after this session was that fence just doesn't need to be there. Um, it's kind of distracting and so that's what I mean about kind of you know, you, you go back and forth when you're working on these things at home and why I like to just work uh, uh, probably about 80% on site and then study it when I get home. It, in the end, it just doesn't need to be there and I will take it out in a different, uh, another do another session. But that was after the fact, after I, I did this video and then I was looking at it some more and said, you know what, that doesn't need to be there. Um, so something to think about. I do like the idea... And I do this a lot in my paintings where you have, for in this case, where you have those dark trees against the buildings that really, man, so that make it pop and pull that building forward. And that's really a nice tool to use and uh, try not to go overboard. Now, this was a lot of fun, just scumbling some little more opaque paint over that base layer and creating sort of that metal roof look by default. La had a lot of fun doing that. It can be a little tricky. I'm using a flat brush and you can see along the uh, edge line there I'll have to clean those up because it's hard to control that flat as you get towards the end but uh, with time and some practice it is just something that you have to practice with. Now I'm just working on getting those pops of sunlight on the side of that little railing and I, I like to see little railings like this when I'm walking around town. It's just the real deal. People just need something to get up to, get up to their door, and it's you know, sometimes required by home insurance. But it just shows the way that they do it on the cheap and and just purely functional. For me, those are the things that really make something unique when I'm painting it, and that's why I kind of put that in there. Just a nice little touch. Now I'm just working on the background roof on the other piece, and there's a subtle value different difference from that uh, roof of the uh, dormer there very subtle color shift. Now getting some uh, kind of light on the side plane of the dormer there. It was a lot of fun painting that. Initially put it in darker and then lighten it up just a little bit to suggest some reflected light. Okay, I'm almost finished up with this little time lapse, so uh, thanks for joining me. And I do plan on getting back to the big painting. It was just letting some layers dry and uh, finish up the holidays here. So don't worry, there'll be another session on that also. And uh, have a great new year and until the next video. I just want to go over the uh, palette that I used for the painting uh, from left to right. So you have the burnt umber, titanium white, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cad yellow, cad yellow pale, cad red light, and rose matter there. And then we just have a little Neo McGilp over here for a little bit of medium. Okay, everybody, this concludes this little uh, touch-up of a plain air painting. Hope you enjoyed it. Like I said before, I usually only finish my paintings 80% uh, on site. I don't want to get too much paint uh, right away in, in those conditions. You can run into trouble sometimes if you're pushing, pulling things and uh, that sort of thing. And when I come home and I want to apply a little more thicker paint like I did here, then it gives me the option to really consider wh where I'm going to add texture and that sort of thing. 
Of course, if you run into that in the field, you can scrape it down and build up and so on. But I find for my method of, of plain air painting, it works well getting the 80%, getting the local tones of uh, areas in the painting, then coming back to the studio. So hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And until the next video, see you later.